quite literally watch the rendering occur while over here it is live coding and then it's recording right there you can see with the opening url and this right here is the money this right here is why i'm bullish on anti-gravity for the future let's learn everything we need to know about google anti-gravity as fast as possible welcome back here on today's video we're going to go over it fundamentally everything you need to know about this new editor provided by the big old google to best showcase this we're going to build a live app together therefore by the end of this video you're not only going to know how to use anti-gravity perfectly but also know how to create an app sound good let's jump in so yesterday's video got a lot of heat so let's go ahead and begin this is anti-gravity first thing i want you to note if you're familiar with windsurf cursor vs code you're like corbin why does this look familiar that is the type of ide we're dealing with in this type of setting so if you're coming from the experience of like yo i build in replit i build in bolt this is going to be a different experience i've been developing for a while so i personally like this kind of developing experience but let's go ahead and create our app together first thing we're going to do is just simply hit open folder and then once you hit open folder if you don't have a folder that is created for a project yet just simply hit new folder in the finder window and name it i named mine app dummy so first thing I want to show you is one of the most powerful features that in the short term is very buggy, but I know in the long term is going to probably break the internet. And that specifically has to do with its ability for Chrome. I'll make sure I leave this in the description down below. This is anti-gravity browser extension. Why is this important? This is what's going to allow anti-gravity to control your app, do tests in your app, click buttons in your app, screen record your app, like all the really cool stuff. You're going to need this. So specifically, this extension, which for some reason you can't even search for it on the store, in the description down below. And part of the reason why I'm so bullish on anti-gravity, even though I still use Cursor AI, is because of this extension. As we know, Chrome is a Google product. Anti-gravity is a Google product. Therefore, as they keep iterating new updates for the anti-gravity IDE here, we already know this is going to get crazy. This is essentially the sauce. For anyone wondering, like, it's not that big of a deal, Corbin. You can still do that in Cursor. You can still do that in Replit. Replit did it six months ago. You are fundamentally misunderstanding what the screen recording is. Yes, in the short term, it's like, oh, Corbin, it's just picture and picture analyzing. We've had this. No, no, no. But you are misunderstanding the intention behind it. What's going to happen is maybe not in this update, maybe not in the next update, but maybe by the third update, it's going to get so good that you know every single time you run into a bug and an error and you're extremely frustrated and then you have to go on this back and forth. No, 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 no more back and forth. It's going to get so good where it can interactively do manual testing for you. It's going to be able to read back end logs, front end logs, and solve the bug all automatically. We're not there yet, but that's why I'm so bullish. Let's create this app. Now, every single app you've ever used in your entire life will have a thing called a tech stack. And the tech stack I like to use is TypeScript with React. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do the prompt here, create a TypeScript React app and give it a simple landing page. I'm gonna choose the model of Gemini 3 Pro Low. That's fine. I'm not gonna plan it. I'm just gonna execute. If you've never coded in your entire life or you have little to no coding experience, I encourage you to do a very simple prompt like this because what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow you to visually see what the code looks like when it's rendered onto your local machine, your laptop, your desktop, whatever it may be. What you need to understand is that back in the day to do all of this, you would have had to known how to install the relevant dependencies needed to build out this kind of tech stack, but we have gotten to the point now where you can use human language to build out this kind of app. All you need to do now is wait. So while this is cooking, if you ever want to open up that browser ability, we can come up here and hit browser preview. One thing that's very annoying about the plugin right now, so it's not just you, is that when it's enabled, for some reason, they opted so that it always opens as the tab here. You can't kind of silo it. So that's kind of frustrating. I assume by the time you watch this, they'll probably fix that. But what you need to understand is that they went the extra 10 yards here with this specific Chrome extension, where even if you are not in incognito mode, it can still control your browser. So keep that in mind, as that is gonna be a very powerful thing you could do, where essentially you don't have to keep logging in if that is required for your application for testing. Now. And that's actually why they probably did it, to be honest with you. Now, if we come up here, this is their agent manager. I assume short-term, mid-term, maybe long-term, they might change how this looks a little. It's a little bit confusing if you've never coded before because of how much they keep it separate comparative to what I see of Cursor. I really like how Cursor does it. But what this allows you to do is this will show you all your workspaces and all the workspaces is going to be a app you're working on. And all an app is that you're working on, the reality of it is it's just a folder, y'all. And I say that so you don't have to overcomplicate any of this. Like this situation is just creating a bunch of files in a folder. Just like if you had a Google Doc and a Google Drive folder, same situation. We got app dummy here. We got a real app called thumbio.com. And we got like another test app. One thing I'm noticing with this IDE specifically, and specifically Gemini 3 Pro, low and high, is the generations 
do take a little bit of time. Keep that in mind, but as you can see over here, look at all these files that are created through one sentence. I've always preached this on this channel. In reality, anyone could code. You just need to know fundamental development knowledge so you know things like what the heck a TypeScript React app is. Let's go to let this generate. And the generation's almost done, but let me click around here a little bit so you can understand how to maybe set up your IDE so it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, first thing, what you notice is an inbox here. For some reason, they opted to have it so that the reason it shows all these workspaces here is because you can see as in theory, you can go ahead and run multiple command lines or in other words, multiple agents at once. So if you were with me for the video yesterday where it absolutely broke because everyone was using the thing, these are all the original agent prompts here. But what is cool and what you'll notice is that in this inbox, in theory, if you wanted to wild out, you could in theory run like three agents and have one agent for dummy, one agent for test app, one agent for thumbio, maybe four agents for dummy, whatever it may be. It's a little excessive. I don't really see the use case personally, but obviously, for the actual single application, the single repository, I could see myself running like three or four agents to at least build out the front end. All right, it looks like it's finished here, y'all. And here we go. So the purpose of agent window as well is to try to mitigate as much of the file organization over here to stop. They don't want to scare you. So the idea here is that, as you can see here, it's running a command and the agent's going to pull up here pretty soon. So here we go. Once it's able to pull it up here, you'll notice these blue little bars, it kind of just disappeared right there. What is incurring when it does those blue little bars that you see in the side is that is when it's doing its live recording. And then you can see right behind me here, wow, I'm <laughs> just realizing for some of y'all that's never like been in one of these IDEs, I know this looks extremely scary. Trust me, y'all, it's very simple once you do it a couple times. Playback available. If I hit view here, it's going to show you what it recorded. Obviously this UI is absolute trash, so I'm gonna want it to kind of ramp it up here. But for now, You'll notice is that it'll do like a fast little loop. It's almost like a TikTok, or maybe like a Vine if you if you remember Vine, uh, which is very fast here. What's occurring now is yes, what I said earlier, where it's probably like taking a video of this, and then when it analyzes it for to code into it, it's probably taking the screenshot data. But think about it: what is a video? Literally a ton of frames. Why do you think it's called FPS frames per second? Are you watching this in 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second? Same idea. What I'm really looking forward to is when this gets to the point where it can actually debug and record live like very, very well. It's a little buggy right now. So I'm going to go ahead and what you do when you do a command like that and you built out your first app and you're following along because you know you got to follow along. It's going to be all green here because this is new code. If I say accept all, we're good. This is nice. We got all this new code here. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a million dollar product. You know you want to buy my landing page. I know you do. I'm going to go ahead and check it out real quick. I think it looks like trash right now. <laughs> it does look like trash. So I can show you a very simple thing we can do here, right? So we can screenshot and a lot of IDEs already do this, but I can, you know, drag it and be like, hey, make this look better. And this is kind of the back and forth that you have with quote unquote vibe coding now. So I'm going to let this make this look better because right now it looks horrible. And then we're going to do a real quick workflow that I wanted to show you in yesterday's video. That is where it can essentially record, go down it, and then create a component based off what it sees visually. And while we let that make our landing page look amazing, if you genuinely are interested in learning how to code just through human language, or in other words, vibe coding, you really got to check out this series here. This is an ongoing series happening on the channel here. This is going to probably be eight to 10 hours by the time it's done. Check out episode one. If you don't like it, you don't like it. I run this down as if you've never coded in your entire life. As simple as possible, y'all. Description down below, let's build your first AI app or just app of AI, okay? Another cool thing you can do is if you've never been in this kind of environment, you might be like, Corbin, where? what's happening? Can I watch this live? You can watch this live. You simply go to your browser here. You can quite literally watch the rendering incur while over here it is live coding and then it's recording. Right there, you can see with the opening URL. And this right here is the money. This right here is why I'm bullish on anti-gravity for the future. So like right now, if you started using it, you're buying like, you know, what's a penny stock. But this thing is going to become one of the big boys pretty soon here. You just got to give the team time. This is their first launch. That feature right there is so prototype that, yeah, it's extremely buggy. But I'm extremely bullish on it because as a developer, the one thing that really mitigates your ability to push out code fast is usually very annoying bugs. You can get stuck on bugs for hours. But this is good. And I think a lot of people have been saying in the community what they like most about anti-gravity and specifically Gemini is how good they do the UI. Like this UI is really solid, to be honest with you. This is way more solid than it should be. Nice. All right, looks good. Keep all. So let's go ahead and try that little screen recording workflow here. Okay, looks good. Can you navigate to localhost and take a screen recording, put in an MD, and then add a component you want? You might be saying, Corbin, what the heck is an MD? Don't worry about it. It's not code that is read really by the application was in production or just a live website link. All an MD is is like directions you put on a Google Doc. It's just text on a file while stuff like 
app TSX. Like this is just code that is actually read by a machine. MD, it could be read by the AI to follow directions, but it's not being read by the machine when the application is actually being run. If you want another example of this, it's very clear. Think of like a readme. And if you don't even know what a readme is, that's like when you go to GitHub and you scroll down this information behind me, where it's purely just for you to read. That's why they call it a readme. That is all an MD is. Now, if you don't even know what GitHub is and you're even more confused, you really got to take a step back and learn what GitHub is. That's fundamentally non-negotiable. If you try to build out anything real, you got to know what GitHub is. If you don't, it, anything you build will fail. And I'm not saying that to be harsh. I'm saying that because here's a situation I know you've ran into before. You're building, you're building, you're build, 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 suggestion. If you know, you know. You're building and then you do a prompt and it absolutely breaks your app. And then you're trying to revert back. You're trying to talk to the AI and it gets extremely frustrating. You run into loops and your app just keeps breaking. Or something like GitHub is version control. So if you break it, you can fall back to what we call stable code. Learn it. Trust me. All right, here we go. The recording should capture it. View is absolutely beautiful. And it's finding something to add here. Nice. Look at that. It just went back up again. <laughs> so let's go over the settings real quick and what you should choose. Review policy, always proceed. This is if you want the AI model just to go absolutely crazy and you never tell it to stop. You can have it so that it requests review, which means that if before it does a change, it's like, hey, can I do this change? If you just want to have fun, mess around, do always proceed. It just goes. Another example of this is terminal command auto execution. This is like when you need to install stuff. So if you never created a TypeScript React app and you don't have this on, it's going to be like, hey, can I do this command? And then you're going to say yes or no. Alternatively, you can just turn this on and let it install everything it needs to install to run the application. Basically, if you have never coded in your entire life, probably turn that on just to see an app running because that in itself is going to unlock something in your brain to be like, this is actually pretty cool. You definitely want this on. Auto open edited files. This allows the agent to have more liberty in your repository and stuff like this. Auto agent fixed lint, auto continue, especially this one. This is good for its ability to catch errors or warnings that come in when they're coding. If you want the agent to have a direct line and connection to the internet, which you probably do, so you can get the most up-to-date information when it comes to using different packages and different APIs, you're going to want this on. Enable agent web tools. Turn that on. It can search the internet. Now, the browser over here is what we've been playing around with and what you've seen so you definitely want this on if you want to have the ability to mess with chrome everything else is very much preference so just kind of look through it if you don't even understand what it means literally copy it go into a chat and be like what does this even mean and then you can figure it out from there all right here we go right here love by developers nova has completely transformed their development workflow the intelligent tools are a game changer thank you sarah <laughs> all right made a component based off visual context I like it. So that just about does today's video. Make sure to check out that entire series I referenced in the description down below if you truly want to learn how to connect a back end, a front end, all of it together, one big cake. Check out the series description down below. But as you already know, these style of videos, I'll see you in the next. The Corbin to show you as fast as possible how to use anti gravity so you can build out any application in the entire world type of video. Obviously, this UI is absolute trash.